Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday, and welcome to Table Takes, presented by Gen Con. I'm Christian, and I'm joined, as always, by Bonsai, Emma, and Derek. Hey, everybody. Hello. Hello. We survived Gen Con. That was we exactly did. what we said. <laughs> survived Gen Con. We survived it. Nobody got any con crud? No. Mm. No. Yeah. Oh. oh. What are you talking about? All right. Great. For those you're of you feeling? who don't know what con crud is, look it up. It's a thing. Mm, it's oh, a thing. don't look at the Urban Dictionary. Yeah, no, 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 no pictures. No pictures. <laughs> yeah, leave off image yeah. search. So <laughs> you're you're feeling better. I remember our two shows ago. We we're talking about Gen Con, and you mm -hmm. were. Thank you for busy. reminding me. I was. Yeah. yeah. I was extremely you, busy. And now you're like prancing through the field without a care in yep. the world. Can't you tell how different my demeanor is? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can. Mm, something yeah. in the eyes, I think. <laughs> There's a lightness in my step. Yes. You're yeah. really leaning into that Derek character this week. Yeah. Uh, I, I like character. what you've been doing with character, it. Character, yes. <laughs> All these. But yes, like the now that Gen Con is over, uh, it was a little bit different for this year, though, I have to admit, because mm. normally Gen Con happens, yes. mm -hmm. and then we basically take like a week off, we go back to the office, uh, but Gen Con happened, I came home, and had to immediately start uh, prepping for this show. Right, right, right. So yes. Gen Con never ends. <laughs> yeah. Never ends. Twitch is eternally thirsty for content. The best 365 <laughs> days in gaming, as yeah. they say. Yes. So, uh, as I said, we all we all survived. I thought it yeah. was interesting that uh, I, I saw uh, you on Thursday, and I saw you on Thursday briefly, yes. mm -hmm. and then I saw you on Friday for the stream, and then I don't think any of us ever saw each other again for the rest of the week. No. I, did, I did stop by your booth, but you were busy somewhere else. I also did that. I saw, I saw you at here. like 2 o'clock in the morning on Saturday or something. Right, outside the hotel at yeah. the JW Marriott. <laughs> I saw you at the dead dog party, Emma and, yes. and Derek, mm -hmm. but you were missing. I didn't see you at the dead dog party. Party. I, I don't. I didn't have any time to go to any parties this oh, week. It was okay, a okay. very busy, very busy Gen Con. Very yeah. busy. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk about the news. I guess yes. since that's what we're all here for, we can yep. we can we can catch up. Life after personally. Gen Con, time <laughs> continues. Yeah. Oh my gosh, As it, it turns does. Out, it does. Although so, I, I just say returning from Indianapolis is definitely like relearning what time means. Ooh, oh yeah, like yeah. Days of the week matter again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's not just your, and you have to like make decisions about what you do. Like yep. your schedule is just so ri rigid. You're gonna like run, 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 and now it's like I have. What do I do? How do I yep. live? <laughs> I, uh, I work nights uh, part time, mm. and uh, that was difficult. Jumping right back in from being in Indiana for ten days, yep. yeah, uh, to having to work nights. So it seemed like if you know at two in the morning, it seems like five in the morning. Yeah, and yes. when I get there, it already seems like midnight. So <laughs> yeah, I definitely describe coming back from Gen Con as returning to civilization. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did a lot of day sleeping this week. Mm. Oh yeah, I slept the first day back. I just slept. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, all right. There. All right, are we ready for headlines, everyone? Let's do it. Yes. All right, here are the headlines. Will Wheaton sues Geek and Sundry. Ooh. I like that we started. Off, I like that we started off with gossip. <laughs> that, was, that was a gift for you. <laughs> and I, I appreciate that. So the celebrity gossip is, in the gaming industry is some of my favorite. Uh, and this didn't involve anything inappropriate. Mm. So that's what makes it uh, special well, for me. financially inappropriate. Financially. I'm, fine, I'm, I'm, I'm just speaking. Allegedly. Yeah. yeah. I'm, Allegedly. I was speaking of different kinds of improprieties that mm. uh, usually make the news in, in yeah. our particular uh, mm -hmm. universe that mm -hmm. we live in in the gaming <laughs> world. So uh, this is about web series profits. This yep. is, uh, yeah. so this, the, his Titan's Grave series that mm -hmm. he did for Geek and Sundry. Mm -hmm. So he helped create that series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was on that series. I think he was yeah. the GM. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he left. Well, the series, the series ended. The series ended. Right? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. uh, and they got a deal with Hulu and so on and so forth. And he has not seen the money that he thinks he should be seeing. Yep. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so he's decided that he is going to take up suit yep. with so Beacon Sunday. He's claiming breach of contract, basically. Right. Yeah. And Saying that, you know, they, they got they clearly got paid for their distribution. Right. Mm -hmm. So he should be receiving a cut of that. And he claims that Legendary is not allowing him to see the books. Mm. So we'll see what happens with that. Yeah. Right. And if that is what's in his contract, that's going to be a, a clear breach. And just, I mean, just pay the man. Yeah. Right? yeah. Just pay yeah. the man. Yeah. It's like, I've, I've signed enough contracts. That guy had to be Wesley Crusher <laughs> for enough years that I just give the man his money. He just wants his cut. Yeah. And this is important things that you, you put in there for the, because the licensing deals can mm -hmm. be very lucrative. And also auditing the books to know that they are giving you the money and not squirreling it away somewhere. So. Hopefully that all gets resolved. Yeah, the problem is if they're not showing you the books, there's probably a reason for yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> whatever they want to hide from him, just stop hiding it. Yeah. Well, I think the other interesting thing is th this is 
I think, I'm not positive, but I think it's the first case of like a streamer or a YouTuber or uh, like an, um, an actual play person, like you mm. know, a, a game um, you know, hosted by celebrities or whatever that got very popular. This is the first time that I think a dispute over the contracts has come to court. Yeah. Now, I'm sure that there have been you know, uh, tensions in the past or, or with different groups, mm -hmm. but this I think is the first one taking that step. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it may be setting up a, a precedent uh, for what we're going to see in the future. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that Will was smart enough to get a contract mm -hmm. with yes. distribution in, in yep. included in it. Uh, you know, a lot of streamers don't do that because they don't think of it. They're, yes, not, they're totally. not from the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like, even myself, if I'm doing a small stream, I'm not worried about an ironclad contract. Yeah. Usually when streamers get disgruntled uh, with their channel or with the show that they're on, they quit that channel mm -hmm. to show, they start their own channel yeah. to show, yes. and a year later, that doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think a lot of that is because with the way that streaming has kind of developed, there mm -hmm. hasn't been a whole lot of back catalog material mm -hmm. right. to get further revenue off of. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Titan's Grave might, you know, again, it, there, I think there's a couple of these, like Harmon Quest, there's a couple other ones that have traditional distribution. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. So as more of that maybe picks up, uh, we might see some of these disputes popping up more and more. Yep. Yeah. I guess it's it's a little sad though if you mm -hmm. see like if you watch any of these shows they seem to be friends <laughs> and you know when you're streaming and doing a show with people it's like you like the people you're working with hopefully I mean it's a yeah. job but yep. in in a thing where you're playing games with people then you develop stronger relationships and just to be like hearing the two names together and now this person is suing this other person it's kind of like oh but I saw them hanging out but together friends or not video. Business is business, yeah. and, and we business, have to consider yeah. that you know Will is a professional yeah. mm -hmm. uh, streamer, Absolutely. a professional actor. He should be treated like a professional, mm -hmm. whether mm -hmm. or not these people are friends with him or not. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, chances are they took advantage of him because of that friendship, and that's how he feels about well, it. Well, I mean, also like I may not be a uh, famous aspiring actor mm. uh, in LA and familiar <laughs> with that scene in any way whatsoever. Yeah. But I also imagine that that when you're in the entertainment industry you do have to separate your feelings for folks yeah. mm -hmm. from the business side of things. And like, Will doesn't seem to be suing individuals on Keek and Sunday. Right, right. He it's seems to be suing legendary. So, you know, I imagine that, that this is not a new thing for Hollywood or mm -hmm. for entertainment. I mm -hmm. think this is a new thing for streamers and actual play recording. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Does this mark the end of the relationship between those two? I mean, that's something we're only going to be able to tell if we uh, keep our eye on this in time. Yeah. And I think that we should do that. Until then, we know very little. Now you know as much as we do. Congratulations. Yep. Congrats, <laughs> as this case unfolds. Mm. Uh, but yes, thinking about case unfolding now. stuff. Oh, hold on. Did you hear that segue? That yeah. was wicked good. It was mm. a very good. Speaking uh, of unfolding stuff. Uh -huh. Unfolding uh -huh. stuff. So basically, uh, this week they, uh, what is it called? Stonemeyer Games, mm -hmm. uh, the people behind Scythe and Wingspan, mm -hmm. uh, have released a new game uh, called. Or announced a new game. Announced, sorry. Mm -hmm. Announced a new game called Tapestry, mm -hmm. which is kind of like a civilization, cultural building game, but instead of you fighting the, like, immediate immediate next to Jason player, uh, you try to work together. So it does have some like instances where, for example, they're like, people cannot invent wagons, but have like nanobots. Right, yeah, exactly. So very it's, it's, civ. it's very civ, <laughs> mm -hmm. civilization kind of uh, feel to it. Um, the interesting thing I find about this is that uh, Jamie uh, Stakes, Stegmeyer, Stegmeyer mm -hmm. has actually admitted that this is like his passion project that yeah. he's been wanting to do and he's very excited about it. it well there's a lot of people who love Civ. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. A lot of people love Civ. So this is something that you want to keep your eyes on. This the news is very new. Uh, they yes just yesterday they re released more of an in depth uh, li Facebook Live mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, talking like talk about it, which I kind of like these companies starting to like do live like hey this is my game that's coming out I wanted to give you an in depth view and ask questions live on yeah. stream. And that way they don't have to make a rule book. I found out too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just do it all on video. Just watch the video. But yeah, the, so, it's oh, a call back to live next episode. Check it's it okay. out. <laughs> So it'll be one to five players. Um, the cool thing is that it's just been announced, mm -hmm. but they're planning to release uh, the copies um, to be available to purchase at Essen Spiel. At Essen. This at Essen insane. Spiel. Like three months, three, four months? Yes. Like, uh, Sto Stonemaier in the past has had pretty announcements and like, okay, we're coming to market now. 
So they do have a little bit of a history of this, but that is That's still very, very soon. Yeah, <laughs> especially because they're announcing... And for those yeah. of us laymen who don't know what Essenspiel is... Oh, <laughs> Essenspiel <laughs> is... Uh, I would like to say it's the second, because I know Gen Con's the world's largest board. Yeah. Yeah. I think it depends on how you measure it. Okay. Mm. Like, I'm pretty sure that Essen has more people, yeah. uh, oh. but maybe not as many people playing games. Mm -hmm. So this is for those international folks and not... US centric. So this is more like, you yeah. know, in Germany mm -hmm. where like there's by the way, hey, did you know that people play board games around the world? Huzzah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, 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 there's a reason they call them Euro games. They're Euro games, yeah. Euro. I thought it was because they cost a lot of Euros. There's nope. Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> no, we know. You might want to re examine that. Yeah, well, well I, I'm doing that right now. Excellent. I mean yeah. Essen oh. <laughs> It comes together. <laughs> Essen the the foundation of modern board games as we know it mm -hmm. came out of Germany. Yes. And so Essen is really the, the heart of that kind of a hobby game. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very big in, in Europe. There's, I think, 100,000 people mm -hmm. who go through the turnstiles. And it's much more, it's a festival, it's a fair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like your state fair where you have families, they have balloons, kids Oversized on Oversized pigs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's deep very much. Deep fried butter on sticks. Uh, uh, that's American fair. That's American. No, they so have deep fried schitzel. potatoes on sticks. They spiralize the potato and oh, deep fry yeah. the whole thing. And Man. it looks really cool and tastes really German good. German ingenuity, right? <laughs> yeah, take a potato and spin it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <But yeah. laughs> they are releasing about 25,000 copies, and yeah. each of these copies will be numbered. Mm. Uh, this is not just because collector, collector, collector item. It's more or less um, people have questioned the companies yep. like s like making false scarcity of their game. Well, there was the whole conspiracy yeah. theory that yeah. they were artificially constricting the supply of Wingspan mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. hype the game up. Yes. So this appears to be Jamie trying to proactively prevent some of those concerns. Yeah, there's yes. definitely By a kerfluffle. individually numbering them? Yes. That's exactly the same thing though, right? <laughs> no, no, I mean like, what, what, basically what they accuse people, uh, them of doing is not releasing enough copies of Wingspan to stores. Yeah, like half hoarding them. For people to buy in the store. Right. So that they would go to the store and be like, oh, it's sold out, it's sold out, must be good. Mm -hmm. And then dumping a bunch on Amazon somehow to mm -hmm. make a, a Profit. Yes. Profit. But Wingspan is, by all accounts, an amazing game. It is. Yes. It is. It but is. people who like it, gamers like to invent, come up with yes. ridiculous conspiracy theories yes. based yes. on their favorite products. <laughs> yes. Yes. I am perfectly Surprise. aware of that. I've come up with several myself. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and numbering games is really just one more way to make something uh, well, limited edition. Ma like maybe, but like uh, with twenty five thousand of them, it's not super limited. Yeah. So I think what they're really trying to show here is. They're printing 25,000 and numbering them, so if anybody wants to go check, mm. they can see that 25,000 were actually printed. Yes. Yeah. And if they're smart, they'll just buy all 25,000 and get the entire numbered set. They're <laughs> like Absolutely. a collector. Absolutely. I can yeah, imagine that's... there being a battle for the top 10. Yeah, box. for the numbers, for it the becomes numbers. like the how long? Fancier. How far away are we from like chromium covered boards with holographic images on them that are just there to are sell more? Are you saying that wouldn't be super cool? <laughs> Uh, of course it would be super cool. It was super like it. cool when it happened to comic books in the 90s, and yeah. I bought a lot of that stuff, but <laughs> as, long, as long as you're not buying board games to invest <laughs> in the future, I think we're going to be okay. Maybe. How, how far out are we? The, how the far out are we? How, how long before it becomes a Beanie Baby? Hmm. Oh. Well, I think the, the kid, Beanie Babies and comic books are like five bucks each. Mm -hmm. When we get board games for five dollars each. Whoa. Yeah. When, that'd be nice to mm -hmm. get a... I will say just that number, 25,000, yes. uh, as far as releases go, that's yeah. a lot. The yeah. fact mm -hmm. that I can take my copy of Wingspan and trade it for a car in Prague. <laughs> <laughs> and for Wingspan, I, I wish I'd looked up the numbers, but I don't think they're even at 25,000 yet no, with no. all of their print runs. Mm -hmm. So this is a big investment. Mm -hmm. uh, Stonemeyer Games is a small company, it's just Jamie. I think that's, yeah. he's the one full-time employee. So anytime, like putting, investing in 25,000 copies is a big investment. And even though like history is great, company is amazing, it's all the games have been. It is a very big risk. Yeah, because you never know with one of these games, like it might be a super hit like Wingspan. Mm -hmm. It might, you know, yeah. be kind of okay. It might flop. So this is. And given the taxes and tariffs we have, we might never see it in this country yeah. anyway. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> People are going to be smuggling them home from Germany in their coats. In their coats. Like... I have a feeling that this game is going to be a little big for the coat. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, you might need two coats. Two coats, yeah. yeah there you it go. It is more <laughs> of a gamble, I like to note, because this is going to be their, they said it's going to be their most expensive game, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. over the price point of $90. Yeah. That is what the estimate is. Um, but if you guys want to find out more details, they're, they are releasing another blog post today mm -hmm. that's scheduled today. They're like, no, nah, no, nah, for real, so for real. keep an eye out. Keep yeah. an eye out. And they have released the cover, too, which is admittedly amazing. Yes. So. I'm, I'm sure it's all very, very beautiful, and the game is going to be fantastic. I hope to see it soon. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I mean, everything else they produce has been really good so far. Mm -hmm. So what's next? Well, after the big info dump that they do today, we'll just see where the game... Oh, you want to know what the next topic is? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that yep. certainly makes sense. Tim Shields of Cascade Games launching Judge Academy. <laughs> Let's talk about the Judge Academy. For those Woo. of us who don't know what the Judge Academy is, mm -hmm. what is it? All right. So, in the beginning... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just building up to the eventual, I'm going to yell about this. this yep. Yeah, yeah. So, judges has been a contentious topic recently. It's always been kind of a thing. So, in case, let's start from the beginning. Sure. So, judges uh, are... Judge, judging what? Judging magic. Okay. Magic. Judges attend and judge... I find it wanting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> more fire, more fire, more ice. <laughs> Judges judge magic events, magic yep. gathering, mm -hmm. and it's important. Uh, they really they make the events the level of competition. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't played magic, or even if you have, there's a lot that goes into mm -hmm. um, deciding what happens. Like for most games, you play the game, you know what happens, you know what all the rules are. And the same with magic, but there's just so many rules, clarifications, and there's there, just there such so, so many depth. cards, so many cards, mm -hmm. so many combinations. So many interactions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it, almost impossible for any one person to know. And the players, you know, they play their decks, but they play against another deck. They haven't seen the card. There's a new cards release. There's so many things you need to keep track of that you really need a judge. You need mm -hmm. an oracle person there to make these decisions because mm -hmm. you can't... Isn't the game designed as such where you can literally just read the card and it will tell you what it does? Yes, but it's like being a lawyer, right? Like you can read a law and know what it does, but a lawyer has a job because a lawyer can interpret the language. There's a lot of order of operations things. And the other key thing I think for having a judge mm -hmm. is that when you're getting into really competitive magic where there's yeah. money on the line, yeah, exactly. then, then, yeah, have big money on the <laughs> then, then having a neutral third party that you can direct your question of frustration to mm -hmm. yeah. keeps the game itself much calmer. Yeah, and for, so all this stuff is known. There's uh, the Gatherer website, there's mm -hmm. Oracle text. So this is 99% written down on the internet what the rulings are for this, but you can't really have someone going through and like checking up all mm -hmm. the rules. The idea behind the judges is they know enough that they can make those calls at a Tournament at the table. level, yeah, at the mm -hmm. table, make these decisions, make these calls, and keep the games flowing smoothly. Mm -hmm. uh, that but, sounds like an important job. Yeah, and yeah. there's with like tens of thousands of cards at this point, and especially in formats that have a broader card pool, uh, modern legacy, those kind of things. Yeah, they, these people put a lot of effort into playing the games, learning, doing mm -hmm. research. Oh, well, I hope they're being compensated fairly. Well, so recently there has been uh, a lot of upheaval around that. Uh, recently, I'd say within the last year, mm -hmm. judges wouldn't necessarily be compensated. They weren't employees of Wizards of the Coast, and they mm -hmm. actually went to trial, and Wizards of the Coast won that, say, you are not employees of us. So they would be employees of the store, um, or the tournament organizer, or the tournament the organizer would hire them. Okay. So there really wasn't a understood hierarchy here, and it was very hit or miss for whether they be compensated, whether they get paid, whether they get packs. And in the past, like before it became such a big thing, you know, they get some packs under the table. It's like you scratch my back, I scratch yours. They get events. That well, sounds free. totally above board. Well, I mean, like the the industry in general relies a lot on volunteer labor of one man or another. Exactly. Just yes. like, yeah. think about how you learned board games. Like even before yeah. we get to Magic, how did you learn board games? How did you learn RPGs? Chances are you didn't grab it off the shelf and learn it yourself. No. Right. Somebody taught you, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, for especially RPGs, uh, large Magic tournaments, there's a lot of labor that goes into making those things happen. And there's not usually a lot of money to pay the people who are involved in that. Exactly. That's so true. traditionally, those have been volunteer positions. Yes. I love magic. I'm going to go to my store, and I'm going to judge 
and administer the tournament. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, not even that. I'm going to get certified because mm -hmm. there was a certification yep. process. Let's that talk they about have to go that. Through. I want to hear about the certification process. It's, yeah. So in before, and we're going to get to what's happening now, but in the past, like you would have to take tests. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And apply and like get these positions. So not only were you volunteering your time for free, you're volunteering extra time to get certified. Yeah. And, to, and, and I think for a lot of people, the reason that they did it is because they, they liked the feel. They like liked being a judge. Mm -hmm. They liked mm -hmm. the a lot of the non-monetary value that they got out of it. They're like, I feel power. special power. Yeah, yes. they got power. Exactly. Right. Or, you know, or, Did you they know, get a special button? Recognition. Uh, they get I special cards. Ooh. Yeah. I think they get like special foil cards and stuff like that. Like, yeah. There were there were different awards over different times. Okay. Um, but you know, like that was the big issue is yeah. mm -hmm. how much how much was this work and labor? Yeah. And how much was this volunteering for a game that you liked? And what really complicates it is Wizards of the Coast makes money off of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Without the organized so events, does, yeah. without organized play, mm -hmm. like that's the game doesn't exist. Yeah, but yeah. So, so does the store, so yeah. does the tournament organizer. Yeah. You know, theoretically that all there's a lot of parties that are involved there and making money. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's what the the lawsuit came from of judges saying, I'm doing work for you, you're making money off of it, I should be paid or something compensated. Yeah. Yeah. But the court disagreed. Well, no, the court, I think, said that they weren't employees of Wizards of the Coast. Yes. Which is not the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And But so it means that they don't have anywhere to point that responsibility. The stores and the tournament organizers. Yes. Well, so they basically dismantled the judge program mm -hmm. as it stands. Like, they're, they didn't want to take any risk going mm -hmm. forward. So they're like, well, we're just not going to do this, and I guess you figure it out on your own. Mm -hmm. And... Obviously, the players and the people in the, the industry are like, well, that's not great. We need mm -hmm. something. You know, this is a very important function. Yeah. And so enter Judge Academy, which mm -hmm. was announced uh, about a it's week like ago. It's like my favorite anime. <laughs> Judge Academy. <laughs> Judge Academy. Or like Judge That TV actually does sound like a Judge. movie or an my, anime. My name, yeah. <laughs> Judge Academy. Yep. Just all schools. So yeah, you got the reference. Yep. All right. We'll dive it. right into it. Judge Academy, uh, created by... Tim Shields, owner of Cascade Games, and he also owns this new organization, Judge Academy. It's partnered with WotC. And, but and, and Cascade Games has done lots of events all across the country. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, they did a lot of events at Gen Con. Um, yes. So they're a huge organization with a lot of experience in this. Yeah, and they're a very well-known company, mm -hmm. and they are very dedicated to events and making good spaces for people to play in. Okay. Um, but yeah, so they're partnering with WotC and potentially other companies as well, because there might be judges eventually for Keyforge and other mm -hmm. tournament events. So Magic and Keyforge are the two games that they've said they're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they want to expand out into other games as well. <coughs> yeah, so they have potentially multiple games that they're going to be judging. But here's the rub. The judges will pay to take the coursework mm -hmm. for this program. So in order to be certified, you have to pay, and not just a one-time fee, you pay your upfront fee, which escalates with your level of judginess, what? and then also an <laughs> annual fee of up to $400. Oh. <laughs> your level of judginess. So wait, wait, so they, it's not that they get paid, it's that they have to pay for certification. If you, if, yeah. for me, if you have to pay for certification out of your own pocket, then yeah. there should be a compensation with that. Now, I think, like, to be clear, I don't think Judge Academy is saying there won't be or there can't be. But they're not saying that will be. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it seems like Wizards and perhaps Judge Academy is trying to take the very, very neutral stance of if you want to be certified as a judge, you need to go through this process. I, and then kind of hoping everybody else figures it out. I'm going to be a kind of a voice of doubt. I don't want this to be like a, I guess, a pyramid scheme yeah. or something that is like, taking advantage of people mm. to pay me money so you can get this uh, shiny new... And what makes that certification matter? Yeah. Correct. What yeah. makes we it... Don't, well, we, we so don't... I don't, what think, if, we, what I don't, I don't think we know yet. <laughs> what if Watsi gets upset with the company for whatever reason? Yeah. You know, maybe a bill wasn't paid on time or something, and they say, okay, those don't count anymore. They could just do that, right? Like I don't know. These, hey, these judge certifications that yeah. you're paying $100 a year for, yeah. they don't mean anything to us. Yeah, mm. it, it depends on what the terms of the contract with uh, the two organizations yeah. is. The we problem is there's, this is on the honor system yeah. For, yeah, for, absolutely. for the game companies. 
like, yeah, we'll honor that. That's that's the deal that I've made with Cascade. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, your judges, we're gonna use your judges. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna pay them for our smaller tournaments, mm. and we'll compensate them for the larger ones, or rather the organizers will, because they're not our employees. Right, right. Like, this just seems like there's too many ways it could go wrong. Yeah. Sure. yeah. I mean, I, okay, go ahead. Yeah, well, because w what they're giving as the incentive now is like, well, if you do have this certification and the tournament organizer is hiring for or hiring for a position or looking for a volunteer, you will look like a better judge because you have this certification. So you're more likely probably to get that job. And since this is gaming culture uh, and we're treating it like it's a sport, yeah. Uh, yeah. why aren't they going through the state? Many states require that their referees and officials be certified through the state. Yeah. Uh, if we're if we're calling this what it is, which mm -hmm. is a sport, mm -hmm. uh, or even uh, if you want to just go down and say it's gambling, depending mm. on what state you're in, uh, the officials should be certified through the government. Why not? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you have to get a license to to be a barber in a particular state. You don't have to get that renewed every year, but at the same time, you have to go through your certification. Sure. Yes. Sure. Officials have to re up their certifications every year. If we're going to make uh, you know, people working in game stores occasionally mm. re-up their certification to say whether or not they know what cards do in Magic mm. and make them pay a hundred bucks a year for it, then it should go through a state certification. Or, Maybe, or, but I imagine that the part of the reason they're setting this up is to uh, present the argument to the government that it is already being regulated by itself mm. within the industry and does not need the government to step in to deal yeah, with it. Yeah, that's always good enough for the government. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, it's always good enough for the government until people complain about it. Yes. Right. Right. Well, yeah. Yeah. well, and it's, it, the question is, is it big enough yet to justify mm -hmm. the government getting involved? I think esports is a great uh, comparison mm -hmm. here for this kind of thing. Like esports does have regulation and they have a lot of conversations with the government about how exactly, how it should be refereed, how it yes. should be regulated. But I, I don't think there are actually all, all any regulations do. in place yet though. Not yet. I don't, Not I, don't, I don't think all sports do. Uh, mm. Like they, they get to the point by having the regulation. I think mm. there's the argument right now that technically there's no regulation that would cover esports or uh, uh, magic yeah. because those would not be covered under current statutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? So sure. I, like, it's, I think it would be debatable. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think there's people who are, uh, well, excuse me, I've, I've talked to people who are pushing for this because they want esports and adjacent mm -hmm. activities to be recognized mm -hmm. yes. nationally, to have national bodies and organizations to have the legitimacy of that. Uh, but yeah, this and I think uh, if you go to the chi channel, Fi Fireball has a great article and a great breakdown here. I don't want to be too skeptical because I love magic. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if trust is the right word, but I have faith sure. that they'll do whatever. They don't want to kill. They don't want to kill the game. You know, mm -hmm. no, nobody's acting in bad faith with this. Mm -hmm. Like they don't. They're not Cascade Games. They're a good company. They're not trying to scam anyone out of money. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to figure out how to make this work. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I wasn't accusing them of anything. Yeah. Uh, I'm just yeah. saying, like, this has the potential for problems mm -hmm. yeah. based on the fact that other sports exist. Right. right. I, I see the bl like the shining light in this mm -hmm. is that once if this becomes a thing and people start getting paid professionally and yes. sanctioned, then it'll allow for other professions like we spoke before, like professional DMs, yes. professional yeah. judges for different tournaments, mm. esports coming becoming a thing. It's more of like nerd culture nerd culture is on the rise yeah. and the more sanctions the more professional the more less that like right now as we are there are still people in society that laugh at people who do either professional like uh, LARPing events, mm. uh, D, D and D games, they're just like, oh, these are just hobbies. Mm -hmm. And for somebody, this is their way of life. And when they have these sanctions, when they have these things, then less likely people are going to be more like you know making fun of it. And you know, I mean, there's still going to be people making fun of it. Yeah, right? adding, yeah. adding, adding legitimacy is yeah, never right. going to be a yeah. bad thing. Never. <laughs> I think the one thing I would love to see with like I would just want some sort of payment structure or some announcement and they're they're so, being very ca like hands off with it but i want to see and like oh and also you know 
now there are a bunch of positions for tournament mm -hmm. organizers of, at like fifteen dollars an hour. Or the whatever. argument, so the concern that I have is, as someone who organizes events, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the concern that I have, or when I imagine, you know, Watsi and um, Cascade and everybody else who's concerned about it, is mm. how much revenue is there to divide up equitably among people involved? Yeah. And that is a very serious question, and I can understand. Wizards' position of wanting to protect themselves legally yeah. and distance themselves because a lot of these judges are going to be used for events that Wizards is not involved in in any way. Mm -hmm. That they, they don't run most of their own tournaments. Mm -hmm. So that I understand, but what I do think is that there's a, like, this news kind of came out very slowly and has trickled out, and I don't think that uh, the Judge Academy or Wizards has really presented the ideal case where right. they want this to work like. Yeah. So I kind of feel like they may need to step in and say, not we're going to pay, but mm -hmm. these are the best practices that we recommend people yeah. follow to make sure that people are dealt with fairly and appropriately. Mm -hmm. And un you know, we, until we have that, it may be a little kind of catch as catch can, and that's usually going to end up with some people getting frustrated and and feeling like they were taken advantage of. Yeah. Yeah. And also, as far as they've said where the money is going to go, they've mentioned that the fees will provide salary payment for community managers, so the money will kind of go. And that's where the pyramid scheme comment uh, comes in. Because, mm -hmm. like, well, we'll get paid. Some people will be getting paid. And then maybe, like, snacks at events and stuff. It's just, like, mm, just it's not exactly. The problem is, if, one of the things, if this catches on mm. and this becomes very popular and, and, and like, Watsi, for example, decides, mm -hmm. hey, you know, from now on, our big tournaments, I only want people uh, judging who have been through this program. Mm. Yes. And that, then that starts happening at smaller events. Yeah. And then these people who are players who, you know, do judging on the side to, you know, uh, help their, just help their card library, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now have to pay 100 bucks a year if they want to even be considered for sure. that position. Yeah. And that, I mean, I, mean I, I think like at, at a certain level, elitism, that's what I'm concerned about. Yes, yeah. but at a certain level, that's only going to happen if there is the people in demand for it to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, if they try to go that way and people decide they don't want to pay $100, then that's going to collapse. Yeah. I just thought of something funny of an underground illegal judge. <laughs> Tournament. A little, oh a little gosh, yeah. like you gotta go knock like a mob doctor. A mob yeah. doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, so I hear you need someone to call your match. Yeah. Pro prohibition You're era match. Like, prohibition era. You got underground games. They call him the mediator. <laughs> 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 just, he just reads know. the stack like yeah. nobody's <laughs> business. What happens when the card goes on the stack? I just want to know. I need to answer. It's like, wow. here, enter your credit card number. <laughs> I love that. That needs to be. I already love this new character. Yeah. <laughs> so I, like, clearly, some big news is going to come through in Magic in the yeah. next yeah. several months. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to see what happens. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I guess it'll be a matter of time just before these new judges are... Storming Jones. the whole <laughs> industry like Marines oh. mm. from Lo space. Oh, from space. Ooh. Speaking space. of Marines from space. Space, space Marines, you say? <laughs> yes, I do. We're talking about the Space Marines today. So, uh, Warhammer 40K, yep. Yep. Mm. right? Which is a very, very popular game I hear. That oh. with all I've the, heard about it. I've heard, I've heard. People. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the mm. young people love the game. They love buying their miniatures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're doing new Space Marine codices. Uh, which means they're re-releasing mm -hmm. some of their older Space Marine figures yep. and giving them mm. new jobs, right? I mean, isn't that mm -hmm. how a codex works? Yep, like they get to go uh, learn new things, like how to judge magic properly. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> no. Which, which uh, costs them 100 resource points. <laughs> yep. uh, right. No, so, so what's happening is there's a whole bunch more Space Marine stuff out, mm -hmm. uh, which mm -hmm. of course, if you are a Space Marine player. If you're a Warhammer player, guy, you, you know a Space Marine player. Mm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a, there's a handful Sorry. of new models coming they out. They have the rainbow. But the really mm. big news is that they're re-releasing the Codex uh, for Space Marines, mm -hmm. and then they're also releasing like supplemental or additional codices mm. for the different Space Marine chapters. Mm -hmm. So if you want the Ultramarine specific Smurfs. one. Smurfs. Yeah, they're, Ultra yeah, Marine. they're, start, they're starting <laughs> they're off blue. with Ultramarines. What an Ultramarine. <laughs> and with the White Scars, mm. and then presumably they're gonna go through all the other kind of major chapters and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So people who are really emotionally attached to a specific chapter are really excited about that. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think from a business perspective, this is really interesting because 
now that 8th edition has been out for a little while and all the major factions have their codex out mm -hmm. and their rules out, people have kind of been speculating, well, and what is Games Workshop going to do now? Yeah. And well, it's, either, it's either a 9th edition mm -hmm. or milk it for all it's worth. Yeah. Yep. Well, so a lot of people were figuring, like, great, gonna in a year it. or two we'll have 9th edition. Mm. And as a new player, I was kind of like, but we just got all the, can we play with our toys yeah. first <laughs> yeah. before we move on? The answer uh, usually is no. Well, the answer now is yes, yes. Yeah. here are more toys and new rules for your existing toys. Mm -hmm. So they had done a little bit of this with the Chaos Space Marine Codex, mm. which they re-released like a version 2.0 or something like that. Right. Yeah. But this is a whole new codex. They're changing some fundamental rules. Mm. Some, a number of the stat lines are changing. So you kind of will need to upgrade. Right. As opposed to the Chaos Space Marine one, which was like, you could upgrade, but you could also get those rules elsewhere. Mm. This is a pretty fundamental change. And it'll be interesting to see if they continue this through other factions. Mm -hmm. So here's my question. Uh, in video games, you'll get Overwatch or League of Legends. When they change characters, the audience loses their shit. Yep. Like, they just go like, oh my gosh, Back I can't. Put, I <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler, They're... yes, the Warhammer fans are losing their shit. Okay, okay. yeah, okay. if you buff, yeah. anyone you buff, you're like, they were already overpowered. Anyone you nerf is like, no, They weren't ruined. good enough to begin with. Yeah. 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 Like, there, there's a lot of discussion about the meta. And like, <laughs> okay. and, and, I think Overwatch was a perfect yep. analogy. Yeah, that is actually, actually a really yep. good analogy. Yeah. The, I think the difference here is that with like Warhammer, you kind of, you tend to have like two big meta shifts each year. Mm -hmm. One is like a big fact that comes out, and then like I think in the spring, if I remember correctly, and then in the fall they release uh, chapter approved, which mm. you know adds new rules and tweaks some things. They mainly will be doing like points adjustments. This thing goes down in points. This yeah. thing goes up in points. Yep. That's how they kind of try to maintain the meta. But this is a different approach where they're just changing some rules and saying, here are the new rules for these things, mm -hmm. and here are the new units for these things. Yeah. So it'll be really interesting to see what that effect has on the meta. Mm. But yeah. people are super excited and speculating. But sometimes mm -hmm. it'll fix Torbjorn. So there? I get it. <laughs> I love Torbjorn from There's the beginning. <laughs> yeah, me too. Really? I couldn't have pictured that. Why? <laughs> no, was, uh, I'm being sarcastic. You just seem like the there? kind of guy that likes to you know, build them up and then break them down. There. The All key the for a first person shooter? They're being able to put a turret up and then go somewhere else. Somewhere else. Yeah, yes. Yes. absolutely. No. You, you and me, we want to uh, we want to play a different game. I want to play Bastion, so we're just we're not running around shooting and, See, and I aiming. I just like the gerbil and the wrecking ball. <laughs> wrecking balls. I just so want to anyway. knock things around. Well, yeah. I, I, Warhammer. I like Warhammer. Oh right, Warhammer. Warhammer. Keeping the game healthy. So mm -hmm. as someone like I always love those balance changes because I'm like the game designers know what they're yep. doing mm -hmm. and keeping this they're having almost a little bit more of a video game model for it. It's like, you know, we release a patch to it. Yep. So this is like yeah. a patch making those improvements. You know, it's not just like, oh, it's broken, but it's printed, so we can't really do anything about Everything it. Everything old is blue again. Yeah. Old is blue. You see, <laughs> because they're the ultra marines. The ultra marines. Yeah. The ultra -marines. <laughs> I don't know. That I like I like when they do update some things because there are clunky things that come out whenever you have either RPGs mm -hmm. or board games. Yeah. And I like this like kind of like, uh, instead of releasing a new book, how about let's do installments to try to fix what we kind of uh, yeah. did earlier. Which yeah. we, we the, kind of know. The erotic culture of <laughs> <Yes>. RPGs. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, th I think the only really downside to this is if you don't play Space Marines, mm. you kind of don't Miss get a whole lot out of this. Mm. So that's where, personally, I'm hoping that they, you know, go help the Xenos, that they go help the other factions. Mm -hmm. But the Space Marines. But they're but space, the space Marines. Marines. Yeah. You space can Marines. Yes, help my bugs. Those are fun. That's funner to say. Or <laughs> fun, funner is not a word. Space Marines. It is now. <laughs> it's now. Funner than Tyranids? Space Marines! You can <laughs> yell like you're drunk. Yeah, that's a... That was very powerful. Excuse me, mm. Adeptus Astartes? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds too fancy. I just want to be my simple... So there you go. There are big changes <laughs> happening to one of your favorite collectible miniatures games. Yes. How do I know it's one of your favorites? Well, there's a list. Oh, yeah, there is and a list. And we're going to hear list. about that list right now. Yeah. From the, uh, what is it, ICV2 mm -hmm. ICV2. Top Games. ICV2. Top Games. So the important thing about this list, uh, we've been talking a lot about hotness, about new release, about mm -hmm. top of the board game geek. Mm -hmm. Like list of awesome fun games you have to yeah. play. Wingspan is the smoking hotness the right now. Wingspan is absolutely the smoking hotness. I got to meet Elizabeth Hargrave. Sorry, sidebar. Uh, I met her and just totally fangirled. I'm like, your achievements are so meaningful to me. Oh, <laughs> like, that's nice. Nice to meet you too. I'm like, <laughs> Uh, anyways, I was Thank very you, overwhelmed. Creepy fan. <laughs> I was that fan. Yes. Here's your box. There. 
Uh, yeah, so ICVT, uh, ICV2's top games, these are, and I believe we did this, like one of our first episodes of Table Take, so we've come back mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. to the new list. Yeah, it's uh, almost, everything old is blue again. A, a quarterly quarter, report. Yeah. Oh. So they interview yeah. retailers, uh, they look at some numbers, they don't release the actual numbers mm -hmm. in these reports, mm -hmm. but you can take it with a grain of salt, but these are the numbers, so numerically what's been selling well mm -hmm. and what people are uh, very interested in spending their money on not mm -hmm. just talking about mm -hmm. um yeah so i guess just get right into it let's, let's dig in yes dig dig top five role-playing games should i do these reverse or well so I, I don't i don't think we need to go through Drumroll. every item in the list yeah like, people can look that up yeah um but i think that it'll be interesting for us to kind of note particular Games. um Metrics, yeah, they're yeah. yeah. Or, or or things that have changed, like mm -hmm. in the RPG list. Yeah, D and D's at the top. Surprising no one. Yeah, D and D's at surprise, the top. Surprise, surprise. Dungeons and Dragons Pathfinder has been number two for about three or four years. But now. the number yeah. two now is, is Starfinder. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was very interesting. That. Pathfinder itself has dropped to the fifth place spot. Mm -hmm. It's still, you know, on the top five list, but clearly. We, people are waiting for second edition, which is right mm -hmm. now out. Mm -hmm. yes. So I'm really And interested. it looks great, by the mm -hmm. way, if you haven't seen second edition, take a look. It looks mm. amazing. I would not be surprised if Pathfinder rockets back up on this list in quarter three or quarter four, you know, the, the summer or fall once we release. start Once they start releasing splat books for it, mm -hmm. I think yeah. we're going to see another big jump in Pathfinder, yep. especially with how, pe how people seem to be very impressed with the new system. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Although, maybe, because Star Wars is number three, maybe fantasy is out and space is in. Space, sci-fi, space. space. Sci as much as I would love that, never gonna happen. Really? I, no. It's never gonna happen. No, I mean, it's it's a nice thought, and mm. I really like it. Star Lord of the Rings looms large. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. They do loom very loomy loomies. Yep. Although Star Wars is basically like space, space fantasy. fantasy. Yep. <laughs> well, but I mean, so, yeah. with technology, so, so, so Starfinder. We did find Damn that it. with technology, like when we had the first moon landing yeah. kind of thing, space yeah. was like the new hotness. Star Wars, I mm. feel, would be doing better if it, uh, you know. Do but the yeah. things that it should do instead of the things that it wants to do. Mm. Oh, but uh, vampires <laughs> in the list too. I'm happy about that. <laughs> yeah, no. There yeah. you go. And after being released, it's only a, it's only a year old game at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, which in you know RPG terms is it's a baby. Very. Yeah. Young. It's a little little baby. It's a bottle. Uh, I'm gonna be interested in next quarter with uh, with the release of Shadowrun: Six World. I have a feeling mm -hmm. that's gonna jump up in spots. It's been. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's yeah. also the hotness right now with a lot of. It uh, sold out at Gen Con. Oh, it right. did, yes. nice. but it, uh, by the second day. Ooh. Oh, what? tell me what you Oh, okay. What? So, like, I was going to try it by the Sixth World, uh, but pretty much in the fandom, uh, people have been uh, very unhappy with Sixth World. Have what? they? It has been blasted all over Reddit. And it, it is worth noting that I don't, Shadowrun I don't. fans take particular joy in hating their own game. Yes, <laughs> yes, that is so, true. Yeah, they're they're, they're kind the of the worst. Flow. They're kind Sorry. of the worst. Hmm. We're kind of the worst. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> we all have a very special personal relationship with Shadowrun. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's abusive. And if you change anything, uh, <laughs> that people are going to just scream about it, especially on Reddit, which is, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. the worst place on Earth. But they also want them to keep releasing new things. Sure. Yep. And then complain about them. Yeah. Yes. Well, it doesn't matter if they complain about them or not. As long as they buy them, okay. they'll make more stuff. Releasing yeah. new things to complain about is mm. a deep <laughs> fundamental a pillar of honored. nerd community <laughs> in general. Yeah, they, at, this, at this point, Catalyst knows better than to listen to any of their fans about either of their major products. <laughs> or listen so, to the opposite. But like, it will be interesting to see what happens with Shadowrun. Just yes. because I don't know if it will break the top five. Mm. Just because... Shadowrun is a beloved world, yes. but the system has never been particularly accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. like, I mean, some people really, really love it. That's why it exists that way. Mm. Yeah. But I think that for it to crack the top five, you know, it might need to make a more fundamental change to be able to edge out one of these other ones that have a more established, larger community. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that will I happen. I do a lot of I would love rules. to see it, but... I'm, I, although I'm, I, this is a great list, and I'm glad to see that people are still buying and not mm -hmm. playing that Star Wars game. <laughs> <laughs> I know people Someone play the Star Wars game. I yeah. want to play the Star I, Wars I game. I sense like if salt and vinegar. Two of them, I'll know two players two of that players. game total. <laughs> I want to play the Star Wars game. I do too, but I don't know anybody who wants to run it. There's. Oh. Sure, I'll run it. Is that going to be. There's not, there's not yeah, a whole lot of There's not a whole lot I won't game? run. That's going to be our action. I thought we wanted to do Alien. Oh, no. No, you wanted to do Alien. No, I do want to do Alien. I do want to do Alien as well. Okay. Well, so, well, Alien is a one shot. Well, game. we have more than like a few days, you know, there's seven days in a week. <laughs> Every day. 
play the game. Oh my games. god, yeah. <laughs> you can do that, right? We're around it. You can chain me in the basement. <laughs> like, run more games. Oh, yeah. Gen Con's over. We run more games. We need more games. chain you up to, for you to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, moving on. You just have to catch you with a little free time is all. Yes. Yeah. Moving yeah. on to non-collectible miniature games. Uh, games Workshop, up there. Yep. Shocker. Yeah. Shocking. Warhammer 40K and yep. Age of Sigmar. So two flavors of Warhammer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. One's, uh, the, uh, one's, the, one's the big uh, sell your house to buy the set. The mm -hmm. other one is the skirmish one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, no, well, no. Age of Sigmar is I just the like fantasy. The okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. The 40K one. is the sci-fi. Uh, sci uh, mm -hmm. And the uh, Sigmar is the fantasy. Which I always <laughs> just called Warhammer. Yep. But yeah. it's, that's technically Warhammer 40K. Yeah. The other one was Warhammer Fantasy, which was then exploded and turned into War, uh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Mm. You've mm. now just been learned. There. <laughs> uh, I, I feel cool. like I done yeah. have been. <laughs> Third on the list is not a game. D&D Nulzer's Marvelous Minis. Not the first time it shows up on uh, on any of these lists. Yeah. No. This, this, yeah, not even a game. We will see this game again. <laughs> It gets it gets pointed out as a game. Uh, I think three times in this entire yeah. bit. Yeah, but it's, and, uh, not, it's a not a game. Just it's not a game. A note for minis games that are games. You don't need to feel bad because a game that was not a game beat you. Well, I, uh, I mean, I mean oh, I, that sounds like you're just rubbing maybe, salt maybe in the gosh darn wound. I, mean, no, I, I think I think this is here. Just this shows how many people are playing D and D. Yes. yes. Because yeah. it's on here. They're like to be clear. This is the unpainted, uh, non-randomized DD yeah. minis that you can buy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty sure it's the WizKids uh, produced ones, and just clearly shows how much people are playing D and D. They're good buy minis. For it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so D and D has also snuck out of its role-playing yep. games category, and like into oh, it'll show up again later. Minis. Yeah. I just wonder if it's the reason why it's popping up here is how they label it in the industry. Probably. Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, the... it's, it's non-randomized minis. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so I guess they're like, where else do we? Some there. of the things on these lists, you'll definitely look at and be like, wait, why does that go there or there? But the way, just it's the way that retailers and distributors categorize. It's almost like our categories are arbitrary. There's, oh right. Gosh, yeah. huh? So <laughs> picking up the uh, rear on this on this particular list, of course, two Star Wars products. Yes. Because, yes. duh. Yeah. Duh. Because Star Wars minis are awesome. They are. And mostly, at least for X-Wing painted. Yep. So. Well, it's interesting to me, it's X-Wing and Legion. Yeah. Not X-Wing and Armada, because mm. I would have thought that Armada was more established. And, our, and to be clear, like X-Wing is the your, the fighter scale one. Yes. Yeah. Armada is like the carrier ship one, yes. where like you'll have a like one unit will be a squad of like six. Legion's fighters. got yeah. a better price point to it, like maybe. so more people can afford yeah. to play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like I, yeah. I just I would have I would have expected Legion would have taken longer to overtake Armada, mm. or but it's. Like, if someone who's not playing those, that seems an interesting note to me. Yeah, mm. yeah. Just, yeah, as you noted, getting those big old ships mm -hmm. can... <laughs> so to go through the other categories, because, mm. like, the, there's also, um, you know, top ten dice games, top ten board games, mm. top ten, or a bunch of different ways that they want to carve out collectible games. Yeah. So to avoid kind of going through, like, all the games in those lists, um, for, the, for the card and dice games... You know the ones that leap out to me. Like there's there's a lot of the classics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, code names, legendary stuff like that. Um, but the mind is very new. Yes. Uh, it yes. Came out last year. It's so good. And then the binding of Isaac. Yes. Seems to like I don't remember that being on the list before. It seems to have no. out of nowhere. No. And That's... how is Seven Wonders in in the card and dice games? Yeah. That that was <laughs> that was part of the huh? Yeah. Yeah. There's so there's some weird ones. Mm. I feel like there's yep. a board there. There is. There mm. is. There is a board there. Yep. Yeah. But no, it's a card game. Uh, so. But code names still at the top of the list yep. Yep. for those games, so that's good to see. Mm -hmm. uh, for the hobby channel board games, guess what's at the top, guys? Catan has oh, yet to what? be dethroned. Nobody's going to defeat that game. Yeah, but it's not going to happen. The Maybe. interesting ones in this list: we have Gloomhaven, mm -hmm. yeah. Azul, yeah. Mm -hmm. Root, yeah, uh, and Sagrada, Scythe. Scythe. All of those are lot of fairly new games. New games. Yep. Yeah. Hey, what to, who can? <laughs> <laughs> that's how you say it. Teotihuacan. Oh. Yeah, Te I mean, he, he sounded so confident, but I still, I still Teo think it's wrong. Mm. <laughs> so, like, but these are all <laughs> well, these are all new games. There's yeah. a lot of the classics in there. You know, Ticket to Ride, Pandemic. Yes. But yeah, Pandemic. It's nice seeing new stuff kind of bubble up and simmer through. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gloomhaven, in particular, just because it had so much trouble with production and distribution yeah. mm -hmm. that you, everybody wanted it, but you couldn't buy it. Yeah. yeah. And now that it's available. I'm very happy to see that it's still in the top, showing that there was clearly sustained demand beyond that group of people who couldn't get it at first. Mm. Mm. Okay. 
I'm wondering where Wingspan's going to end up because the reason I would mm -hmm. guess it's not on this list is because they haven't, it's again, the same yep. production they issues. Didn't, yeah, so they this, didn't this, even this bring many of those to Gen Con. Well, this yeah. is the list. copies they brought and they were out. Yeah, know, they were yeah. first day, day. I was aiming for that game and I did not get it. But remember, yeah. this is the list from Spring. Yeah, I only got this it because I went in before the expo opened. Mm. This is the list as of a couple months ago. I should have just gave you money to get it for me next time. It'll be interesting to see how it evolves in the coming months. All right, for the top collectible games. Let's uh, let them guess. <laughs> <laughs> what are the number one and collectible number two games. games on collectible card games? Mm. Mm. The answer may surprise you. It no. won't. Mm -hmm. It no. won't. It's been the same game for the last years. 20 years, guys. We, we may have talked about it. <laughs> yeah, already. Today. Yeah, so today. Magic and Pokemon are basically That's it. Yep. Yeah. swapping back and forth. You know, Yu-Gi-Oh's in there. Yeah. But Keyforge. Keyforge. Key Key Forge. Forge. That's, That's huge. a new one. Yeah. That's a new game. Yep. Mm -hmm. Also, the Transformers TCG happy. made the list, nice. mm -hmm. which is good for them. But also, number five most collectible game is the blind D&D <laughs> Do you do booster pack? So the booster yeah. pack? Yeah, okay. It, right. I mean, it's, it's yeah. collectible. It's, uh, that's the one this little yeah. box, yep. right? Where yeah. you, and then you pick it up and, and like, see which one's the heaviest and shake them a little bit, and then you take that one. I like that Marvel and DC Hero Clicks are still on the yeah. list. Mm -hmm. you know, yes. They're not at the top uh, anymore. Holding on. But there's the people who are still buying those things. Can hmm. you believe it? Okay. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> and I have a garbage bag full of those things. And that is uh, the rundown yeah. on yep. what ICV2 says the kind of best selling and most uh, talked about like in demand games are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think this list is very important because when we're talking about games in our peer groups with hobbyists, we have a very different view mm -hmm. of what's hot or what's big. Yeah. If you're on Board Game Geek yes. and you're yes. just looking at the hot list on Board Game Geek, it it's really interesting to me to see where it crosses over this list like, and where it doesn't. I like yeah. how we think it's not important, but we literally just spent like 11 minutes telling you about it. That's right. Tune into Table Takes for all the unimportant <laughs> gaming news. All unimportant. <laughs> well, it's, so. a, it's really interesting for like how insular our hobby mm -hmm. can be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was teaching a class with high schoolers last night. I'm like, what are the games you've played? Monopoly, Catan, oh, yeah, Cards that. Against yeah. Humanity. And like you one kid came up. <laughs> oh yeah, they were playing Cards Against Humanity. Well, no, it's high school. It's fine. Yeah, <laughs> one kid came, or they, they, one kid mentioned it, and then everyone giggled, like, "Oh, that's so bad." You guys got big back then. And one kid had pl played Betrayal at House on the Hill. So this just once more because his parents own a gaming store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we're we're looking at the the hobby expanding, and mm -hmm. we're thinking about gamers versus non gamers, I think it's very interesting to see. Um, like when you talk about games with someone who's not heavy into the hobby, the kinds of things they might know about. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, to me, the the order of the list is not as important yeah. as to See how the list yeah. changes from season to season. Yeah, absolutely. But also to note that those classics like Katana and Pandemic are all, and still in the list for a reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the only like if everybody owned Katan and the hobby wasn't everybody growing. Everybody does. Yeah, so Absolutely. We, we all assume everybody has Catan. Yes, but it's still Catan selling. wouldn't be in the top of the list unless there were enough people entering the hobby fast enough yeah. to keep it at the top of the list. Yeah. So, you know, you might be unhappy that this old game is still there, but that is a sign of strength for the hobby, I think, yeah. mm -hmm. that we have a couple pillars that are still there while stuff around them will continue to kind of rotate in and out. <laughs> Catan, D&D, &D, and yeah. Magic the Gathering. Yep. yep. That, that's, that's it. Yeah. I mean, those are, those are our mainstays. Those are, yeah. our, those are the bar where we <laughs> set everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the kids in the class last night was like, so is Monopoly a good game? Because, oh. like, me, professional game designer up there. So, like, tell me, like, is Monopoly good? I'm it's like, got like, some well, good fundamentals on it, actually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm like, oh, can I? It's, it's good. a good it's, life lesson game. <laughs> it's approachable. People, you break it out. People know how to play. They don't need to read the rules. Or they think they know how to I play. I like the idea that you're, you're labeling Monopoly as approachable <laughs> as opposed to alienating. Like hey, you want to play Monopoly or everyone just kind of backs away? Softball. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's next? Uh, yeah. Well, that's a, that's a great question because, I mean, we're talking about new stuff. Some people, we had, if you watched our live stream mm. last week, yes. live from Gen Con, uh, we had some guests on. We did. And uh, two of those guests were from Funko Games. Yes. yes. Now, uh, we had a little bit of news about Funko this week since obviously this whole last story we talked about was about a quarterly report. Mm -hmm. Well, quarterly reports have come in for them too as they are beginning to break into the games industry. Yes. How did they do this year? I'll go ahead and... 
dish on that. Oh, oh dish. dish. We're going to dish. Okay, Give so me the this is the quarterly two report. So this does not include the uh, the board game that they just released at Gen Con. Right. Yeah. Uh, just for your know, but which looks so cool. It does. Which is amazing. It does. The Golden Girls. That's where you got yeah, it. Right. Oh, thank I have you them. For being I, a I have them. Yes. They're on a plane. They're in a box. I don't have them in my house. I would have brought them, but they're being shipped. I just got mine. <laughs> but oh, uh, so, I, I did not have time to go anywhere. So um, <laughs> what? So basically, they thought um, like the uh, what is it called? Analysts thought that the game itself would only be making 170 million. Mm. They like basically punched it really hard in the face and made 190 million. You mm. mean Funko in general, not Funko the game. in general? Sorry, not, yeah. the Funko, games. not the games. Uh, so it's a total of 38 percentage of growth. Mm. Um, and, and it's mostly just filled by the international sales that are going on with Funko Pop. It's just, it's quite interesting to me how much of a sensation that has mm -hmm. become. Um, and now that they are starting to like branch out to the other, like as you can say, the mm -hmm. board game, yeah. how much this figure will grow. Um, just like, I know it's not necessarily as the numbers is a board game kind of thing, mm -hmm. but it is quite exciting to see like uh, a person with like, properties that are mostly like nerd and comic book yeah. and geek inspired um, become such a big Fun thing. Funko is a behemoth, yeah. Yes. Like, like in, but it's also interesting to me that Funko is one of those things that people are really like dismissive of yeah. yes. until Funko comes out with the figure for that one thing that you really yeah. like. Yes. Right? Like, and oh. that, and then, I, uh, gave, I gave zero craps about Funko yep. until they started making wrestlers. <laughs> yep. 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 And you know, you have some of those. I did not say that. Okay. You're he did not about admit it. to that. I also did not deny that <laughs> either. <laughs> yeah. I've got my eye on maybe mm. one or two. Oh, yeah. So, I, I mean, the, the CEO of Funko has been talking about expanding more and more. So, they got into board games. Mm. With the whole idea that Funkos are figurines, mm. there may be in the works, this is just speculation, RPG games. It's okay. very easy to branch out if mm. you already have the figurines. Yes, yeah, yeah. well, You're a fighter, but your head is very large and your eyes are very small. <laughs> well, it, if your eyes are dead, you have seen too much. The latest D and D race, Funko Pop. Funko. Well, we, we talked a little bit about this at the beginning or before the show about comparing it to mm -hmm. other flash in the pan collectibles, such mm -hmm. as Beanie Babies, for example. I think uh, the Tickle Me Elmos. Remember those? Oh, for <laughs> You You know you've made it as a toy company when moms like mm. get into fist fights in the middle of a toy store uh, over your product. Yeah, I think the big difference here is IPs and a lot of IPs. You know, it's yes. not just that these are toys or figures or collectibles. These are, they are pop mm -hmm. culture. Yes. You know, you represent, you, pop culture is us. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about ourselves in terms of the pop culture things that we like and now we can have something to show off. So these are, <laughs> it sounds a little meta, but these pops are our identity mm -hmm. for a mm -hmm. lot of people. It's so. the same as with like, our graphic t-shirts. Like, oh, yeah. There's a lot of things, but I think I just, with, I just got so sad about the world. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> for better or worse. Yep. For, for better, better or worse. Or worse. Yeah. This like, is the world we live in. Yeah. It's the world. It's the Funko world. We mm. just live in it. <laughs> I mean, the whole it's idea of intellectual properties, mm. like either buying out or buying within yourself is kind of interesting to me. Mm. I don't know. Mm. It's a... Uh, almost as if they're taking over with these IPs. Mm. As really? We are seeing IPs, not just from outside pop culture things, but within the gaming industry itself. Mm. Mm -hmm. So there If was, only I had some example of that. Well, there are two examples from Gen Con oh. that I thought, uh, they were kind of um, illustrative of, I think, what we've been talking about, hmm. where there are so many games that are coming out, there are so many products that are being released that you can't just rely on having a really good game anymore. Mm. You know, you have to have more than that. You have to have a plan to succeed. Like, there's been a number of kind of articles that are going around to designers talking about how to pitch and package yes. and yeah. how a game is a product and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But one thing that really struck me is interesting at this year at Gen Con is we had a number of uh, licensed products announced for Cyberpunk mm -hmm. and for Vampire. And it seems like, you know, with Funko kind of bringing in uh, a lot of the like pop culture IPs, or with that same design studio working on Villainous and stuff like that, mm -hmm. we have seen licensed games coming into their own and being really good. But now I think we're also seeing licenses from within the hobby industry staying within the hobby industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So instead of having you know White Wolf or Paradox now uh, releasing a card game of their own, 
they are partnering with Renegade. Yeah. And Renegade is releasing an expandable card game, mm -hmm. which is basically the non-fantasy flight term for a living card game. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of interesting potential there. It's not Jihad or Vampire the Eternal Struggle that was the old classic game for Vampire. They've mm. announced that. There's not a whole lot of details out beyond that, but Renegade is a big company. Mm -hmm. Right. For them to pick up a license from Paradox for Vampire, you know, they probably ties to the fact that Vampire's in the, the top five RPG list. I think yep. it more ties into the fact that both Cyberpunk 2077 mm -hmm. and uh, Vampire the Masquerade have both have AAA video games coming yep. out within yes. the next mm. year. Coincidentally. Yeah. No <laughs> coincidence, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. That's why they're so pushing then on it. Cyberpunk, Simon uh, is producing a card game for that, designed by Eric Lang and uh, Andrea Chiarvesio. Excellent. I, uh, yeah. I have it on good authority. We're going to be seeing several Cyberpunk mm -hmm. 2077 products from yes. different companies yeah. with that license, putting out different kinds of games for that license and that's within the next year. And that seems to be a behavior I don't think we've seen in the industry outside of big movie releases, mm -hmm. like yeah. when, when or Game of Thrones. Like yeah. when well, Game of Thrones come out, there's going to be a bunch of. I think one of the closest that, things was maybe uh, when Fallout 4 came out. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of, yeah, we yeah. Had the Fallout board game followed right after. We've had the uh, mm -hmm. and it's just been kind of picking up steam because that was a good game. Mm -hmm. Yep, but I find it very interesting that they're starting to cross over just within the industry itself. Yeah. Well, right. now we're becoming the IPs. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of exciting that some of the properties from board gaming can be big enough and popular mm -hmm. enough that it. Counts I think <laughs> as it's a, an IP. Yeah, the fact that, like Vampire the Masquerade, is primarily it always been a role playing game. Yep. Yeah. And the fact that that is getting the kind of coverage on that same, you know, different mm -hmm. companies picking up that license. Yeah. Yep. That's yep. awesome. Bloodlines Two is going to be pretty big, I think. Mm. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. If you liked Bloodlines One, <laughs> I mean, did you? Uh, I never played it. Oh. Because mm. I was always tabletop. We never, we never yeah. got into it. It's mm. very good. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, it was it, as far as those kinds of games go. It was way ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. So, just as somebody who loves both these properties, mm -hmm. I'm really curious to see because I also really love living or expandable card games. I yeah. love the idea of that. So, I, I can't wait to see what the Cyberpunk 2077 card game is going to be like because mm -hmm. uh, apparently you're forming basically teams of uh, uh, like I, I keep wanting to call them shadow runners, but, <laughs> but yeah, like they call them cyberpunks. Yeah. Which, uh, uh, Cybers? Cyberpunks? Netrunners? Well, but it's not. But it's also not yeah. Netrunner. It's like, not like, Netrunner. It's, it's definitely mm. a bittersweet thing. If I want I want Jihad Cybes. and Netrunner to come back, uh, but both of these games sound. I, I'm certainly in to check them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I suppose means that licensing the IP works. I just want Keanu on my team and I'll be good to go. Mm. There's that. You're breathtaking, yeah. you know that? Mm -hmm. You're breathtaking. Okay. <laughs> What's next? Uh, yeah. Ah, well, as you may or may not know, we all went to Gen Con last week. Oh, right? <gasps> oh, yeah. Really? Oh, my God. So oh, we, yeah. we did. So did we survive? We that. did. Not only did we survive, we are here and we're going to give our impressions of this oh, year's show. Of this Final year's show. Impressions. Final impressions. Final impressions. Final impressions. <laughs> it went real smooth. Yeah. Cool. Uh, record, especially considering record numbers, I think we announced just shy of seventy thousand attendees. Mm. Ooh, nice! Ooh, nice. Mm -hmm. it's a, that's, those are those are good numbers. Seventy thousand mm -hmm. people. It felt like seventy thousand. Seventy thousand unique. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. The turnstile yeah. is multiply that by four ish. Right. Yeah. I yeah I heard from multiple people that it was incredibly smooth. So that's mm -hmm. that's how you want a show to go, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. There's that's how you want a show to go if you're running it as an attendee. Uh, you want chaos. You don't necessarily want chaos, chaos but mm. I mean you're not you're not you're not as concerned about how the show is running behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're excited about the game you got to play or yeah. missed out on because you didn't sign up soon enough. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or sold out in the exhibit hall. <laughs> or sold we tried to find a bunch of, because uh, you were also on the hunt for a, a plushie. plushie that you thought would embody the show. Oh. I did. So that's, I found that's... it. I saw the cube and I mm -hmm. wanted to get the cube. I was like searching all over before I had to go live mm -hmm. and I couldn't find it. And it was sold out. Aww. And also, uh, I have a bone to pick with all of these people displaying stuffed animals that are not out <laughs> yet. There yeah. was a Displacer Beast by uh, Monster Plush Fight Club. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, this is prototypes. Mm. And I'm like, why? There was a real cute owlbear, too. There was. There were very cute owlbearers. And right. I was like, how much is this? Because it's on the table. Right. It's like, I will, sell. I will buy it, though. Yeah. Anything's I think, for sale if you pay enough money, right? And yeah. I was also yeah. willing to uh, buy floor copies of things. I'm like, hey, you don't want to pack this up and take it back with you. I could I could buy this. I can see you mm. wheeling and dealing in the exhibit hall. <laughs> That's what I was yeah. trying to do. 
So your workout. impressions were they sold out of the stuff you wanted too they fast? They sold out <laughs> too fast. If I don't have a list mm. at the beginning of the game, like, you know, Second day, I did get uh, a signed copy of um, uh, Everdell. Oh, nice. So yeah. I was aiming for that. That was one of the games I was aiming for, and I got a signed copy as well. So I'm happy about that. Yeah. If it's any consolation, some of the stuff I wanted was sold out too. Yeah, I know. It's okay. No, it's 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 fun. I think it is actually fun to try to hunt down yeah. and get the games that you can. Uh, but at the same time, it's 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 heartbreaking yeah because i was like wingspan it's an wingspan, emotional wingspan. roller coaster <laughs> yeah, like my, my advice Thursday morning i got it my yeah. advice at any convention yes is mm. go into the convention with like a uh, have a list if you can yes mm. but when you if you go into the convention if you see a thing that you know you will want just buy it buy it yeah because by the time you come back it may not be there yeah right, right. like anything that you're anything that you were on the fence about 100 percent wait like my advice mm. is absolutely if you are a little bit waffling Walk the whole yeah. hall or yeah. walk as much as you can. Think about it later. Come Just back walk the next away. day. But if you know, like, there are times when I walk by and I'm like, I know I'm going to buy that RPG. Just buy it then. Yeah. Because it, it might sell out. It, it is. That is something I learned. That's why as soon as, like, I'm like, okay, uh, I couldn't get the giant as cube. I'm going to get these baby dragons. Yeah. I was going to say, gonna... don't these embody the spirit of Gen Con? They I did. I did. I did. But I also like mm. soft, plushy things. But yeah. these these are good. I also named them. So oh, all. So that's Jen, and then that's Khan, and this is Indy. Oh. So I, I do name I all of these there. stuff down. I, I don't yeah. get it. Yeah. There's Jen and Khan. Right Jen, Khan. Oh, Jen, Khan, yeah. Indy. Jen, Khan, Indy. Indy. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> See? Sorry, I just... Yeah. So. Well, I don't always respond to clever. <laughs> it gives you something to, to buy next year. Next year, yeah. Displacer Beats. I'm coming for you, Displacer so Beats. You, you know that for next you year you're going to go with a list. Yes. Yeah. And we're going to have booth numbers listed there with them. So yes. like, we're going to go completely prepared next year and you're going to get that stuff. I'm going to so get you, the you dice. You learned no. something. Print yeah. out the map important. and figure out the optimal route. Yeah, that's what I'm, I am. I think you're totally going to have time to crawl the hall like that and not be running around to meetings. and. Oh, yeah. Dogs. Totally not yeah. only have like maybe an hour. So Derek's impression was things went super smooth. Yep. Yes. Uh, Valentine, there wasn't enough stuff. There wasn't enough time to get all the stuff. stuff. I need yeah. more time. It needs to be more like stuff. a week long Emma, event. Emma, uh, you, yeah. you played a lot of games this weekend. Um, I did because I was playing them on stream. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't, uh, which was great, actually, mm -hmm. to be able to, because otherwise I'm just running around to meetings and I usually don't play many games during a con. I'm like, why do we well, even go? I play zero games. games. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you were busy, busy. Yeah. Well, you played... The game of roles. The game of roles. Yeah, <laughs> we're on. Is that on like stage. a bakery game or a... <laughs> like the role? Oh, playing, yeah, if you're talking about the shows, roles. yeah, we did. We did game. We did two yeah. shows of Gamers Live. Yeah. Uh, for the first one, uh, we did Rifts this year. Uh, which Wait, what's this? Rifts. Yeah, I'll tell you Have all you about it. Have you heard uh, about and uh, yeah, because of that, I got to meet Kevin Symbiata, who created Rifts, and nice. uh, got to work on my new show a little bit and I the only thing I did buy in fact was like fig, like two figurines for that show. Nice. Nice. Because I knew I wouldn't have time to do it so I did it before the exhibition hall opened yeah. one morning. And uh, that was pretty much my whole show. It was just yeah. Work 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 when you were when you were working the show uh, time flies. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. yeah. And it, then it, of course we did our fan symposiums yeah. afterwards to kind of do state of the unions. What I noticed this year mm. that I thought was really cool, my impression of the show was a lot of people are playing games that they've never played before. Mm -hmm. mm. They're coming to the show specifically mm -hmm. and just signing up for stuff, not because they have any experience with it, but because they don't have any experience nice. with it. Yeah. Nice. And I haven't seen a lot of that in previous years, but uh, we run uh, several like a few dozen uh, sessions with our uh, Demon Hunters yeah. RPG. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those all sold out this year. Wow. Yeah. Like, nice. the, well, not, not only that, but they we expanded, I think, almost every slot mm -hmm. uh, by multiple tables as well. And I think those sold out and too. And those sold out too. Wow. People are there to play games. Yeah. Yep. And that just gives me so much joy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as somebody who doesn't get to play games at a convention mm -hmm. uh, that there are so many people there that are coming specifically just, just to, to like, play, games. play games yeah yeah and they don't always care what the game is right nope. yeah they, they're open to yeah. trying new things like the, i would love that kind of freedom yeah. well that's also like specifically what the the board game geek hot games room is about yes yeah. and I was what gonna mention the about games that. on demand rpg room is about mm -hmm. where 
you kind of go there not knowing exactly what you're going to get to play, but you know it's going to be new or different or or it's going to be the kind of thing you're interested in. Mm -hmm. So you try something new. Yeah, and that one's for after Gen Con, after hours. Like they do like until midnight, yeah, the yeah. hot game, mm -hmm. board games and such. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was like fun to just like, ooh, look at all the new games. Yeah. Well, all of these were on fun. my list. I hate you guys. <laughs> oh, I, oh. I do realize, I do have a complaint. Oh, I needed boy. about like oh, oh. 10 more hours. Like 10 more hours of Gen Con, and then I would have actually been able to do like maybe a quarter of what I actually wanted to do. A convention <laughs> is like water, <laughs> and it will fill whatever container you put it in, trust me. Yeah. We give you 10 more hours, you'll be like, eh, just 10 more maybe. Yeah. Make it like a yeah. seven, a week long event. Yeah. That should just. Like a week. week. How, about, how about we talk to the exhibitors in the exhibit hall <laughs> and see how many of them want to go to a week long show? I know exactly the sentence they would use, and it's something they would want you to do to yourself. There. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I did want to run over a couple of the games. I mentioned that I played sure. games on stream. I wanted to run over a couple that I didn't get to mention last week. Uh, Riot Quest by mm -hmm. Privateer Press. So Good Privateer guys. Press does War Machine and Hordes. They're known for extremely technical minis combat. Mm -hmm. And this is their Saturday morning cartoon battle game. Mm -hmm. So a uh, little tinge of a flavor of a MOBA. Not exact, like... And isn't this, like, smaller scale, too, where you're not fielding, like, an army, you're yes. fielding, like, a squad? Yes, you, you have between five and ten characters, okay. four on the board at any time. The cards are pretty straightforward for their mm -hmm. actions. Treasure is spawning. You're, you're, you have missions that also spawn over time. So for this, for a minis game, and I think I'm, I've been getting more into minis games, which is cool. <laughs> I, it's the kind of thing that can be very intimidating mm -hmm. uh, on the face of it. Yep. But for... Once you kind of take the leap, though, it's like it just sucks you right in. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And this one of the minis games I played just flowed so well. And I Great. felt like all the decisions I were making were... It's like a combination between a minis game and action figures. So it's like, Ooh. I'm going to come over here and punch you in the face. When, so once you say that, you are truly a mini. That's right. <laughs> punch you in the, the face yep. with my, my person. Yep. <laughs> so uh, it, it, we are hoping to have Privateer on to talk yes. more about the game. Yes, if we can play So one of my favorite too. things about every con year yeah. is, is seeing Privateer Press and watching Matt Wilson, uh, who, who, who owns the company, yeah. uh, watching his smile slowly fade into Sunday. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> as he just gets done with the con. Yeah. Uh, and my one other thing is uh, Over the Edge. So I was Ooh, able, mm -hmm. able to go on stream with Atlas Games and Jonathan Tweet, who is the creator of this. I love me some Atlas uh, Games. Originally created in 1992. It was the first. Like most Atlas Games. Yes. <laughs> as when the company was forming. Uh, but this one was their first, like, mm -hmm. uh, their own IP that they were doing and not a supplement for something else. So completely rewritten, re-released. Mm -hmm. uh, what I really liked about this, Fancy it got me covers. excited. Very shiny. Um, so I've been getting more into RPGs and trying to learn different systems in anticipation of designing some myself. Uh, but what I really liked about this system in particular, it's like you have two dice. Mm -hmm. You have your dice, they are your fate. You roll them. And, mm. and the, the game gets really into those dice. Like yeah. it tells you, to, tells you to pick some two dice. Yes. Don't roll them for any other game. Yeah. Don't let anybody else touch them. Yeah. Like they are your channel. Like the, the this is an RPG that is very weird and likes to weirdly take itself seriously as a joke. Yeah, it's, yeah. It is a very distinct and unique kind of game. But yeah, and, it's, and you it's can't like, use new new dice. Yep. You can't throw them away and get new ones. Mm -hmm. Like those are your yep. dice for Ooh. this game. Ooh. Yep. Uh, and so, I like the the worlds they were creating. Jonathan was talking about the uh, lawyer for the dead to keep them out of worse hells. So one of the characters, these are the types of characters you can create in this world. It's like, well, you're going to the, I'm going to get you, get you probation, get you some purgatory, you know, so. So <coughs> I played this at Origins. Yeah. Because uh, I backed the Kickstarter and uh, <coughs> the character I played was Sasquatch the Ghost Hunter hmm. who hunted ghosts so that he would have someone to talk to because no one would hang out with him at all. Oh my because god. Because he was Sasquatch. Yeah, because he was so sad and scary yeah. that he would have to go to the ghosts to have someone to hang out and talk yeah. with him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's that's pretty cool. I, I, still, I like the hell lawyer very weird idea better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's just me. Hell lawyer. Hell lawyer. Hell that's kind lawyer. Of the kind of stuff. Barrister mm -hmm. Dean yeah. Ablo. Mm. So what else did you play? Uh, we're doomed. Which is actually the second time I got to play that because I played it at the release at uh, PAX East, I believe. Uh, the super fun 15-minute social uh, roles 
kind of a game where you're trying to build a spaceship by throwing in resources. Oh. And you need to have enough influence to be to get on the spaceship. Mm -hmm. And then people, the cars will make you like one person takes out 20 resources. Uh, and some people are just getting influence and not building a spaceship. And you're like, you're going to get on there even though I'm building it. So it's very it's political to the max. Okay. Uh, but it's it time. Sounds intriguing. Yeah, sounds like a friend ruining <laughs> type you, you of like game. You like that. Yes, tell me more. <laughs> you have a, a giant sand timer that's 15 minutes. So you're building, you're putting the resources in, but you're running out of time and you need 40 in there, which is hard. So you're like grabbing stuff, putting it in and all the events make you slow down. Oof. So it's like, don't use the word I, you must refer, refer to your uh, corporatocracy in the third person or you lose stuff. That reminds me of uh, Mountains of Madness, ah. which is like a, yeah. a party yes. game for for nerds, basically. Yeah. Where you, it's a it's a very simple, forward, forward, straightforward game. Yeah, yeah. But you layer on these weird things, like anytime anybody talks to you, you have to scream and hide under the table mm -hmm. for like five ah! seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like the card game asshole. Sure. It's where you add rules and like, you know, never mind. Yeah. What? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Uh, Gen Con. Anything else that you want to share? Uh, definitely going to get Tentacle Town. That was one of the Kickstarters we talked about. Yeah, mm. I remember. Yeah, I was like on the fence about it, and, and now you, you, you saw it. Now you're like, now I'm gonna get it, and it's gonna. I think their Kickstarter is coming starting soon. Ooh, fun! Sweet. Yes, yes. So it's probably going to be awesome. Awesome. Yeah. The other thing I thought was interesting was that. Uh, I think it's over now, but both Amazon and Steam oh, had yeah. board game sales. Yeah. Coincidentally during Gen Con. I don't think oh, that was coincidence. That's I mean, we're, yeah. we're real live boys. Amazon knows Do you feel like you did it? <laughs> it, it? It's just really cute to see yeah. like, you've got your big event, and the people are like, yeah, also us too. Yeah. You got Amazon. Well, I hope totally that, I mean, arbitrary. I hope so, we, were, we were streaming everything on Twitch, which Amazon yeah. owns. Yes. <laughs> so that was good. That, that's totally real. You oh, just happen yeah, to have yeah, a big yeah, summer yeah. sale that coincides also, with Also, I invented Amazon Platinum Prime Plus Plus. Okay. Plus Plus? Yeah, which we used in our Gamers Live show. Mm. So we had, we had you know, our Amazon guys show up anytime I just mentioned that I needed something. Because <laughs> I'm a Platinum Prime Plus Plus. Plus 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 Plus. plus. The mm. second plus is just this plus symbol. Yeah. I, you need more pluses every year it goes by. Mm. We'll see. We'll Add see. Plus. Sounds like a Doc Wagon contract. Right now, it's just it's my <laughs> character and Bezos are the only ones that have it. So. Mm -hmm. mm. Also, more LARPing events. That's what I demand. Awesome. Uh, there's a lot of them. I know, yeah, but I, I need I don't know. More. I've never seen a LARPing event at Gen Con. Yeah. Never had the opportunity. Well, you got to get out of the convention center. Go to yeah, it's in the I'd other buildings. To. Who's they're, inviting they're, me? They're oh, so yeah, part of my next job? time yeah. when we have yeah. the IRL, we'll you stream. can come along with me. Yeah, yeah we streamed. Uh, oh, nice. We actually streamed the LARPing event. Nice. By uh, Chicago uh, Con. Oh, yeah, Chicago LARPing. Con LARP. Yeah, because Chicago Con LARP. Yeah, it was great. Also, we should shout out, so all of these, we streamed a lot of the stuff that was yes. going on, and you can still see all those streams on Twitch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they'll be uploaded to YouTube. And like YouTube as well. Week. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we're but talking check, about Check out here. the Twitch channel, which yeah. we're watching this on anyway, and check out some of the VOD from over the weekend. There was some good stuff. There's yeah. a lot of good stuff. There was plenty of good stuff. All right, we have a very, very little time. Yes. Left. Oh. You know, we've got, we've we really got, we've been sitting here BSing for a better part of an hour and a half. Yeah. We're going to have to just scream bam, through bam, the bam, rest bam, of bam. this uh, bam, as quickly bam, bam. as we can. So, on to bundles. Yep. Bundles are this, essentially. The bundle of holding has the fifth edition of Ars Magica available. Mm. If you're not overly familiar with Ars Magica, it's where you play a wizard. It's sort of a historical fantasy. Mm -hmm. One of you is a wizard. The rest of you play the wizard's entourage, even though every character does have a wizard. Uh, what it has is uh, good storytelling and plenty of very crunchy build-your-own spells. Mm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Super it was, simple. It was, you know, it's basically mythic Europe, and it was really influential and innovative when it came out. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and this is the most recent version of it. So people who kind of it's want... A, it's in its fifth edition. Mm -hmm. People nice. like this game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all you really need to know. And it's Get available it. on Bundle of Holding. Uh, this all this week, and it's it's super cheap for a lot of stuff. Yep. Yeah. Check it out. Check That's it out. bundles. Bundles. Kickstarter bundles. Queen. Mm. So oh, kick Kickstarter it Queen, actually, the first one is going to be. Oh, this is going to be me, by the way. Uh, Gatefall Chapter One going on. If you want a game about minis and fighting, uh, this is the game for you. Uh, <laughs> apparently, apparently you do. I do now. Yeah, I, I blame me, you. But but probably. also added bonus. <laughs> these minis are so big. They they have one dog figurine that's the size of like the same moose, like moose in D and D. Mm. It's as big as moose, so it's a dog moose. So are they miniatures or macrochers? 
Miniatures. Miniature. So they're, well, they're still smaller than the They're still yeah. smaller. I'm just going to warn you right now. If it's it, not like if dog it, size. It would have to be bigger than a real dog. Oh my yeah. God, I want a minis game that's like life size. Like then it's not Hogwarts a Hogwarts Harry, Harry Potter, Potter chest. It's called, then, it's called statues. That's, yeah, yeah it's called statues. <laughs> but yeah, it's, other news. A, <laughs> it's, a, it's a light uh, deck building tactical game where you just like so you have these like decks of cards that either say zero or one, mm. and you can pay to get rid of the zeros. If you mm. get zeros, you don't get moves. Mm. If you get yep. ones, you get moves. Yeah, yeah, you're trying to like prune up mm. your deck over the course of the game. Nice. Yes. Anyway, uh, check out their Kickstarter. Uh, um, the, it's, the video. The video is not good. No, it's it's not there very good. But it's okay. It's uh, <laughs> the gifts. It's, okay. <laughs> it's the gifts actually explain more than the talking. Mm. Uh, but it's it's all right. And there's also a cool note. Uh, mm -hmm. Only one uh, donation level at thirty nine dollars. Nice. I like so that. there's so no it's tiers. Just, you're basically, you're just buying the game, yep. and they're gonna send it to you, and that's awesome. Yeah. And so this is from the creator of Super Fight. Yeah. Mm. Super Fight. Very Fort. very different kind of game. Yeah. Yes. And the other kind of funky interesting thing is that it's. Uh, genre, each team is of a different genre, yep. and it's kind of mm. mashing them up. So, kind of like the, Super Fight. Kind of, yeah. Well, kind of um, like Super so Fight. So, like the, the, I think the one they're kickstarting right now is the fantasy. Fantasy. So, you know, you've got fighters, wizards, stuff like that, versus uh, post apocalyptic. Yes. Mm. And the post apocalyptic team. You got fighters, a dog. Uh, you have a dog. That's the dog. The dog oh, is yep, here. One of the characters is a dog. That makes it the third most adorable Kickstarter on yep, this list. This week. Post apocalyptic um, dogs are generally not as cute. Uh, this one actually is really cute. It's, it is. It's, it's a wearing, beagle. It's wearing goggles. They're cute. Oh, in like, yeah. Uh, is it an Akita? Because if it was an Akita with goggles, it would be the cutest thing ever. No, it's cute a beagle. Cute and a goopy Oh, sort beagles of are really way. cute, too, though. It's a beagle. Uh, but the beagles are... Thing, I don't know. <laughs> so, but the, the, they, I think, previewed in the Kickstarter that one of the next sets they might do is sci-fi versus zombies. Mm. Yes. Mm. So they're going to kind of keep pushing that. Mm. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've gotten through one of the Kickstarters. Yes. yes. Good Next. job, everybody. Way to keep time. <laughs> yep. Uh, the next one is Smartphone Inc., uh, which is a kind of a weird Euro game where you're using these tiles to kind of lay out like a what looks to be like a smartphone touchscreen yeah. to kind of determine your actions and your resource generation. A lot of interesting buzz about it. I see you're all smiling because you know that <laughs> I have bottled up the fact that on the cover, he is not using a smartphone. He is using a tablet. Here we go. <laughs> we had pointed out that maybe it's just trying to be a very generic phone. It's it not is trying a, to look nope. like any it existing phone. It is a tablet. To which you replied, not it's a freaking iPad. <laughs> yes. It's an iPad. Okay. Uh, so, I'm, is this game being re-released? Or is this the first? Because I feel like I've been hearing about you this have, for like, months. They, they were promoting it at Origins. Right. Like, I think they've been pushing this for yeah. a while, and now it's finally launched. Yeah, it looks really cool. I've seen it compared to... Except for that damn tablet. I know, right? <laughs> Uh, food chain magnets? Yep. So crunchy. Or, yeah. 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 I mean, this is definitely a heavy Euro game yeah. with a lot of interesting components. Like that, if you look at, you think, oh, smartphone, simple, but then you look at the player board mm. and it's like one of those uh, two layer player boards with inserts and there's there's a lot of pieces to play with. Yeah. And it's mm. about your smartphone company mm -hmm. or producing yeah. the yep. production. So of the it. idea is like, you know, it's back before smartphones can work. Completely Steve dominant. Mm. So you are trying so to be the company. Game, kind of. Sure. Yeah. It's a retro so history. But did they have Steve tablets? Jobs back then? is what I'm not. hearing. Steve Jobs. <laughs> Yeah, Which basically. came first, yeah. the tablet no. or the smartphone? They're more concerned about Steve careers. Clearly yeah. not the iPad. <laughs> careers. Dad jokes. Sorry. All right. So moving on. Yep. Moving on. The next one. I'm just going to say that no. for ten seconds <laughs> because moving everybody on. loves on. Blood Bowl. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, this is our obligatory riffs slash blood bowl segment. Mm. Yes. Uh, and this is <laughs> this is uh, chaos warped halflings. Mm. So if you want to field a blood bowl team of halflings who have gone through the warp, mm. here you go. Yay! Yay. Something and just stuff. for you. Yeah. yeah. What, I, what I just love is just you, Dominic, on our on our production team uh, was really like blood bowl, and then we got to Gen Con and it just kept showing up like behind him everywhere. <laughs> Like it was yeah. a specter stalking yeah. him through the show. Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl. You want to play? Uh, the next game um, is Once We Moved Like the Wind. Mm -hmm. And this is a war game. Uh, very war gamey. Mm. Um, but supposed to be uh, accessible, but also presenting a, a kind of historical conflict. I mean, giving a little bit more context around the conflict. Because mm -hmm. I guess uh, like other circumstances and other considerations. Which conflict? The Apache War. That's, mm. a, that's a scary time in American history. Yeah. It is. It is. So apparently so it's very asymmetrical. 25 years of death. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, so it's very uh, asymmetrical. Apparently the Apache have a lot of uh, like bluffing and, and elements that they can introduce. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed really intriguing. 
and you know a, a topic that is not really got a whole lot of board games on it. Mm. Uh, do you play like as the different sides? Mm -hmm. One person plays the Apaches and the other person plays the bad guys. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just, <laughs> just for clarification. Just for just clarification. Yeah. 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 We did. We tried to kill all of those people. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the next Kickstarter is Trudvang <laughs> Legends. And this is a Kickstarter board game, capital Kickstarter. KBG, Kickstarter. Uh, Hooray. based on a Swedish RPG that was mm. also on Kickstarter. Yep. And this is definitely one of those, if you have a lot of money and you want to invest in a game, mm. they will give you plenty of options here. Minis. There is a long list of amazing looking minis, yeah. a long list of expansions are ready to go. Mm -hmm. But this is a cooperative game, it's very story focused. Uh, so if you love kind of Norse mythology, or you just love Kickstarter board games, mm. this is the one for you for the week. Okay. All right, nice. good to know. It's called Trudvang. Trudvang. Trudvang Legends. All right. Um, the next one sounds like you. Yeah. The next one is absolutely me. If you may remember, if you watched our last week's stream, we interviewed Mr. Hawk Robinson from yes. RPG Research, who mm -hmm. was uh, promoting a Kickstarter for his friend who is doing a documentary about gaming in mm -hmm. prisons yeah. called Let's Play the Story of Dungeons and Dragons in Prison. There are four days left on this Kickstarter. And it needs help. And it needs help. It there's needs a, help. There's a, there's a ways to go. And normally we don't talk about Kickstarters that uh, haven't already succeeded. Uh, I think the reason that this is even on the list is because I, a, a few of us feel very strongly mm -hmm. that this yeah, is very, an important project. It is. So if you get the time, take a look at it. Uh, and back it if you agree, and maybe even back it if you don't agree, just so you can see the other side of the coin. Yeah, uh, it's going to be very interesting, and uh, we'll probably be having Mr. Hawk Robinson back mm -hmm. on the show yes. sometime in the very, very near future. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I definitely the think that there's a lot more material we can talk about with the social good that um, well, just games just in general, role but RPGs in, in general, with society. Just, looking at yeah. just, just the the numbers he pulled out about the recidivism rates of people mm -hmm. who have gotten yeah. to do this uh, is, is worth taking a look at it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you uh, look at our episode, Table Takes from last week, the interview there was just it's blew great. Me away. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, making it about rehabilitation and yeah. not just punishment. But uh, just the fact that RPGs are banned in a lot of prisons. Yeah. Yes. Or dice well, are dice, banned. Like dice a lot and of the a lot steps of books. That, yeah, the, the steps that uh, prisoners have had to go through to be able to play mm -hmm. are pretty incredible. But yeah. Uh, oh. So take a look at it if you can. Yes. Uh, Bonsai. Bonsai, really quick. Hey, do you like Bonsai. dogs? Do you like dogs yes. that steal things? This is yes. Uh, yes. Canine okay. uh, Kleptomaniacs. It has six days left. Uh, it's basically you're b a bunch of dogs that steal things. It's cute, gross. Cute, gross. It's cute, gross, because the stuff is like cute, but they're gross stuff like poop pizza and oh. used <laughs> underwear yes. and, uh, and stuff like that. This stuff is that a, dogs just love to eat. Yeah. Stuff yep. to, that, yep, they love to eat. Um, and this is a age friendly all like you know kids yep. kids mostly you, for kids mostly for kids <laughs> i would say it's probably yeah. the target does, audience. does the phrase poop, poop pizza, pizza make you laugh then sounds like this, <laughs> this is yeah, yeah this it, is it, it does it makes yeah, her laugh yeah, she like <laughs> poop pizza poop pizza. <laughs> pizza yeah you can still so you were a, a child i admit i am a child yes so <laughs> canine kleptomaniac yes. yes all right it's about dogs that steal stuff and have poop pizza yeah pizza pizza six more days emma just say, it, just say it out loud. Magical kitties save the day. Yes, they do. So if you, I don't want to say if you don't like dogs, so I love dogs. I you love don't cats. Like dogs. Well, Everyone do. loves dogs. Everyone should like cats too. If you like adorable things, you can be a magical kitty. Uh, the pitch for this is every magical kitty has a human. Every human has a problem. Sad. I added that for emphasis. Sad. In magical Sad. kitties, save the day. The you need to use your it. magical powers to solve problems and save the days. So uh, this, this was a project that our Kristen uh, also was super excited about. Yeah, yeah. I, can, yeah. I, can, I can imagine. So <laughs> she demanded that yes. we at least channel her spirit. Yes. Okay. So just a moment, I feel like she would be like, I'm very excited about oh this. Yes. Yes. This game is amazing. They got yeah. magical oh my God. powers. That's, uh, that's yes, the, uh, everybody take note. That's Derek's first impression yes. on the show since Table Tech started airing. <laughs> and go. you know what? It was spot on. It was yeah. my best impression. And that was it. Kristen, we miss you. I was impressed. Come we back do and miss visit. You. Visit. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. So you do you. The actual, you just get it. I mean, back. Just it, get it. There's cats. Adorable. Yeah, there's cats. As so all ages RPG, you play cats helping people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and if it's anything like the other all ages RPG that I play on the mm. regular, which is No Thank You Evil by Shauna Germain. Uh, yeah. I seriously games. thought you were going to say riffs. <laughs> 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 Not 
Yeah. If they do a Rift Edition, rift. I'm totally buying that. <laughs> yeah. uh, but if you like those kinds of games, and I really do, I've enjoyed enjoyed playing with my uh, with my younger nieces and nephews. Yeah. It, it's it's so much fun mm -hmm. to get to bring people into the hobby, and if this is a way you can do that, absolutely do it. Yeah, and yes. good and educational for kids to learn these skills. Yeah. And, and I mean, you might want to. Where else are you going to learn about magical, magical cats that solve all your problems for you? All right, folks, that is all the time we have for Table Takes presented by Gen Con this week. Don't worry, we are here every Friday at the same bat time, and usually we don't talk for quite as long. Make sure that you stick around for our uh, rundown, right? Yep, new release rundown. New release rundown yeah. coming up right after this. You can also check out the Brothers Murph on Mondays. Uh, good old... <laughs> Good old what's his name Peter's Peter Peter fireside <laughs> chat on Wednesdays. <laughs> Good old what's his name owner of the company. Good old what's his name. And uh, Thursday they do something, right? Uh, no, Thursday we don't do a thing. Well, we um, will before too long. We'll see you we're then. We're getting more yes. stuff. We so. are getting more stuff. Yeah. All right, everybody, have a good and safe weekend. Gen Con is over. Long live Gen Con. See you next time. See you around the table.